this week we're bringing our Road Scars episode a little bit closer to home. We're here in Edinburgh and we're going to focus on Washington Township and Edinburgh history. So we're standing here in front of Edinburgh Lake, uh, but it wasn't always known as Edinburgh Lake. Uh, originally it was known as uh, Kaniate or Kaniate Lake. This land was inhabited by a group of Native Americans known as the Eries tribe. Now, eventually the Eries tribe sort of disappeared. Uh, they got into uh, a number of wars with other neighboring tribes over um, hunting grounds, uh, particularly the Iroquois and the Huron, and they sort of disappeared by about the mid 1600s. But Native Americans lived in this area. It would have been heavily wooded uh, and they would have used this water um, for fishing and also to uh, trap animals in this area. This is really like a densely forested area. Um, and they also called this the land of the living snowflake, which I kind of find funny knowing how much snow falls here every year. That like, they're right, the land of the living snowflake. So here we are at William Culbertson's uh, grave site. He actually came here in 1796 to survey the land. He came with Alexander Hamilton, but not the Alexander Hamilton that you think of. That's right. Uh, Culbertson was a Revolutionary War uh, soldier, veteran, who came here from the eastern part of the, uh, Pennsylvania in order to establish his own settlement. Uh, he got five, uh, a tract of land that was about 500 acres large, and eventually he's going to break that down into smaller pieces and sell off to some of his uh, friends and to some other people as sort of like a way to earn money. Now, originally, Edinburgh was not called Edinburgh, it was called Washington. But Culbertson's wife, uh, who went by the name of Granny, uh, she said, there's already a Washington PA. We can't have two Washington PAs. People are going to get confused. So why don't you rename it and name it Edinburgh after the hometown of your family where they originated from in Scotland? So he changed the name from Washington to Edinburgh. But it's also kind of the reason why we call this area Washington Township as well. It goes back to that original name that Culbertson gave this, uh, this area. So I'm guessing that some of you recognize this area where we're at right now, right? This is sort of that where Edinburgh Lake, that the dam where Edinburgh Lake sort of like outlets its waters. So back, way back in the day when Culbertson settled the area, this was the site of his grist mill. There was a grist mill over here on this side and they milled flour. On this side, there was a sawmill. And they owned it for a number of years until they sold it to the Reeder family. About the mid 1850s, uh, they sold that mill to the Reeder family and then it passed through hands a number of times, but the mill still existed. Now, it wasn't the same mill. They had, they had to rebuild it a number of times to make it bigger uh, in order to accommodate all the work that they were trying to do there. And the mill stood on this property until about 1959. In 1959, it had been abandoned and the local Boy Scouts were doing a newspaper drive and they stocked it full of newspapers. The people who live in this community thought it was a fire hazard and they urged the town to take it down. So that's what they did. They took the building down, even though it was still a pretty structurally sound building and could have been used for something else. Uh, they were worried about it becoming a fire hazard. Okay, so we're here at the intersection of 6N and Plank Road, not too far away from the Mount Pleasant Ski Resort. So in the 1850s, a lot of people start moving to Edinburgh and it really starts to boom. And to meet the demand, they need to improve their infrastructure, their roads. So they build a turnpike. Now you and I think of turnpikes as like the Pennsylvania Turnpike. It's a you know pretty massive undertaking, a multi-lane, so on. But at the time in the 1850s, this is it. This is a turnpike. And this turnpike connected Erie down to Meadville with Edinburgh sitting in the middle. Now they called it Plank Road and it still has that name today because the road was made from wood planks. They also sometimes refer to these as corduroy roads. They call them corduroy roads because uh, if, you, if you know what corduroy pants sort of feel like, they have those ridges, but they were uh, excellent for the wagons, uh, horse and buggy, to travel on. 
Because if you didn't have that, you had to go by dirt roads. And we know the kind of weather that we get here with our lake effect snow, that these, uh, these roads would be muddy, they'd be full of potholes, and the wheels on those wagons would break very easily. So this provided them with a more safe and efficient way to travel from Erie to Meadville. So we learned about Plank Road, and Plank Road really kind of opened up Edinburgh to a, a booming time. We see a lot of Southerns coming in here and selling here, and the need for schools. You know but from behind me that this is the normal school. We talked about the normal school in a previous episode, but the normal school eventually becomes Edinburgh University. And it really is like one of these things that helps Edinburgh transition into being a booming town, especially like in the mid 1850s. You know, William Culberson really uh, landed the jackpot in terms of locations. You know, Edinburgh Lake is beautiful. It has, the area has amazing summers. And you know, back in the 1800s, he actually marketed this area as a resort destination, encouraging people to settle here, creating summer camps, cottage areas, and so on. And it became a place for people to come in the summertime and rest and relax. It still is today. There are a number of cottages here, uh, the beach over here, uh, and people really love to come and just hang out.